All right, time for another journal flip through. This time I am looking at journal number eight. So this is my eighth volume of visual journals. And if I open it up um, right here in the inside, I can see that I started it January 30th, 2006, and I retired it. That means that I kind of put it on the shelf October 31st, 2006. So this is from 2006. So, um, you know, 14 years ago, wow. Um, so I just wanted to do another flip through. One of the interesting things is that this book completely tore out of um, all the pages, tore out of the binding. So there's uh, some mac masking tape kind of holding it together there. But uh, unfortunately, that's what happens whenever you stuff the journals full of fodder. So this was from a time when I was going and teaching at a place called the North Carolina Center for the Advancement of Teaching. And so a lot of ideas from that, uh, from that week long experience kind of ended up getting in here. What I, what I find really interesting though, as I start to flip through, it's like, you know, this is very layered, but thinking about how much layering I do now, even in the journal, um, it, you know, this seems very sparse. There's not quite as much layering. Still using acrylic paint. I was still teaching high school art at the time. And so acrylic paint was something that we used a lot. So as I was using it with my students, it ended up in the journal quite a bit. Still doing lots of image transfers. Um, the really interesting thing is that, you know, as a high school art teacher, you know, I was teaching art and I was creating a lot of stuff just in my classes and I had access to a whole lot of different things. So um, it seemed like that was a very productive time and it was just because I was on a daily basis sharing and teaching art and of course that ended up coming into the, the journal. So this one has a lot of acrylic paint on it, um, but it's really interesting to see how some things have remained the same and some things have changed. Oh, there it is, word change. One of the things I noticed is that I, I used a lot of stenciled letters and I've kind of gotten away from that and I'm not really sure why. I think it's in part because I have so many stencils now that a lot of them just kind of stay in the studio and I don't carry them around. I think that has a lot to do with it. But you know, some of these things that I still do, like highlighting words with, with color and uh, different materials. See, I like this acrylic face here. One of the things I really like about flipping through and looking at old journals is just like getting, getting new ideas or, or going back and saying, oh wow, that was such a good idea. So here's a page that's a little fold out that's started to rip out. I need to repair that. Um, but yeah, just kind of like flipping through and seeing things and, and being like, oh, that is really interesting. That's really cool. That I need to go back and kind of work with that. The other interesting thing is to see kind of the seeds of other work. So when I start to look at this kind of stuff, I start to see the beginnings of a series that I call excavation. And, um, yeah, it's just really interesting to see that, you know, even here, these are all kind of the, the beginnings of that, that series of art. And I think that's the, one of the most valuable things, at least from an artist standpoint with the visual journal is that it is a place that ideas come up, um, and things just like, they just start, you know, it's like they, they end up. This, like I said, the seeds of an idea or seeds of artwork start and then they grow and you explore them. Notes from the Chicago Art Education Conference way back when. So this is right around the time that Dave and I were really starting to do workshops with the journals and... Um, traveling and doing art education conferences and things. So yeah, this is really kind of that, the beginning of that. 
you see a lot of the little rectangles, but just not as layered, not as, in a way, rich, but I, I kind of like it. I feel like sometimes now, with my journal and with my art, I kind of overwork it. And so there's definitely a, a different feeling to, to um, these pages. Something that I really like. I guess this is one of my favorite page spreads. And this is uh, based, I think, on some artwork. I'm not sure which one. But there's layers, but it's not a ton of stuff. And I love things like this, like this pop-out map of Chicago. And that's from a Picasso. Elizabeth Murray, so a lot of influence of artists. And then a lot of people will see these numbers and kind of wonder what they are. It's actually a game called Farkle. And I don't play it as much. Dave and I used to play it all the time. The brain, this brain image has become something that has shown up again and again in my artwork. It's something that I really like. Image transfers on um, torn newspaper. These are all uh, laser prints that I use to create uh, image transfers, and then I took the papers and glued them in. That's a cool phrase, encountering spaces. A photograph of Dave actually working where I'm actually sitting right now. So this used to be my studio, and then I moved it out, moved my studio out to my garage. And then here recently, because of trying to share stuff online, I moved my studio back into the same space. So of course the journal is a great source for memories, like just kind of looking back and seeing things. And uh, this was a, a big Dada exhibit. I think I was right around that time. And so I turned it into a spread in the book. And blind contour drawing. You could see a face here, nose, mouth. Just all, yeah, just like I had mentioned in another video, just very experimental. A lot of there's another blind contour drawing. It's probably one of my students teaching at the high school level. I can see a face, legs, the arms, so they were probably posing. Ticket stubs. And these are definitely from students. Well, I not students drawing, but I drew them in here while while you know they were doing working in class. That was that's the thing, is like a lot of what I was demonstrating for the students and showing them ended up going in the book. Here's a student project, a stenciling project that I did with them. The student didn't want it, didn't keep it. So I took it and glued it in. This is a drawing. This is my friend Brian Kirk's artwork. So it's just really interesting to kind of go back and see these. We went and saw Monty Python span a lot. Hmm. More Farkle. This is an interesting page. It actually started with index cards that have little drawings on them. 
One of my students, Natalie. And this is, must have been her uh, senior year because she wrote me something in my book. So this is all from her. This is a card that she gave me. So just really interesting to see, again, those memories. So you can see like the blinking eye. <laughs> Trip to the Outer Banks in North Carolina. More beach stuff. And planning for a new school year. Meetings. <laughs> I like these little kind of fold outs, little extra added bits. Joseph Cornell. Well, this has a lot of these like fold places that fold and whatnot. Again, just kind of looking back and going, wow, this are really interesting ideas. And so here we are at the end, the calendar, and then the pocket. And the end.